Man, I am in love with this uh, new Tesla coil I made. Kind of a Don Smith spinoff. Um, for anyone who doesn't know what's going on, um, my goal is to make a generator that runs itself forever and it's solid state and it incorporates a lot of old technology using new parts. It's a solid state Tesla coil with some Don Smith ideas incorporated into it. So what's occurring here is we're disturbing ambient and we have very impressive wireless power still no degradation in that um, we're varying capacitance with respect to time which is the dielectric ball and when that field collapses it sucks in power from the environment and the excess power goes to the primary and the primary is what runs the load that's a 150 watt halogen lit to full force running off of the raw RF power from the primary um, the best way to run this would be to have it go through a full bridge rectifier which I did have and this output was putting out over 500 watts I don't know why but it appears whenever you put a rectifier on it more power manifests in the system and this 500 watt rectifier melted this was a full bridge rectifier it melted and the diodes failed on me so I ordered better ones they're coming in <clears throat> so I'm running my Tesla coil off DC switching my transistor real Tesla coil there's four parts to it the L1, the L2, the L3 and the L4 which is the dielectric antenna the ball um, L1 is one inch long 8 AWG everything's built on two inch PVC L2 is 26 gauge, 4 inches long. L3 is 2 inches long, 18 gauge wire, wound counterclockwise. And the ball antenna, which is nearly perfect, is a, it's either a 6 or 8 inch diameter, I'm not sure. And we still have very impressive wireless power. Got these interesting grounding effects, it'll still light up touch this to anything ground it lights up blindingly bright so we have a generator here that is outputting more energy than we're inputting and the reason for that is it's disturbing the ambient background and I just have it sitting in a bowl of water to keep it cool because I'm doing very high power tests Normal operation, I don't need that bowl of water, it's just I'm really pushing the system to see what it can do. And I have plans to make that thing even more perfect. So, as you see, I can touch this thing to almost anything metal and it will light up. Like, the radiant energy effect with this thing is insane. It's absolutely phenomenal. And if people know more about this or how to improve it, I would love them to get in touch with me. And I also sell this as a kit for 350 bucks. You can get the big one or the small one. It includes everything to get yourself going. You won't have the halogen bulb. It just comes with the transmitter itself and five of these little receivers. And a mini variable DC supply to run it. So here's all the radiant energy effects. Very fascinating. And as long as each individual light is separately grounded you will have unlimited light. I incorporated um, things I learned from Don Smith, Eric Dollard, and Thomas Henry Moray into building this device. And the output seems to be far greater than the input. And the reason for that is we're using a small amount of energy to pump or move a larger amount of energy from the ambient environment. And to make this even better, that ball should be insulated, which I'm going to do, and the ball should also be coated with a special material to attract more charge to it from the air, more ions. It should be coated with something that, I want to say piezoelectric, and I shouldn't be saying 
more than I am because a lot of this is getting into territory where I have the improved versions built on my computer and whatnot, and I'm hesitant to share them because it's all my technology and it has the potential to run itself forever as long as you have an earth ground connection which you can see right here so it's sucking charge out of the earth a high frequency charge probably from cosmic rays I don't have all the answers but I do know if you craft this thing in such a way it will produce phenomenal energy output and outstanding wireless power and I've been messing with this thing for almost three years now. It started with that little baby coil. And then it just kept growing. So I started very small and with the most efficient circuit I could make. And the ideal Tesla coil is just as wide as it is tall. And that's nearly achieved here. But yeah, anyway... Um, that's, you could cook an egg on that, that's very bright. Figure I'd make this video and show everyone what's up. Um, I'll disconnect it. See what our power goes to. So we go from 1.3 amps, we'll just say it's 1.4, round it. And I don't want that on the wood. That's really hot. It's very bright. Let's see if we can zoom in where it says 150 watts. Hopefully, you can see that it says 150 watts. And it's at full, it looks to me like it's at full brightness. And we still maintain the impressive. Radiant energy effects. Very impressive. And this is lit, these coils, and this is lit through one wire. Or I could touch it, it gets brighter, or I could ground it. These look like they're about to pop. All wireless power. And when you do this, there's no degradation on any of the other loads. No degradation on the halogen. No degradation on anything. If there's experts in this field, I would love you to tell me what exactly is occurring here and I'm gonna try and power up this big bulb hopefully I can make good contact there we go that's a big bulb not at full brightness of course but it's running it You have to have a lot of current to run that bulb. Like it was glowing molten in there. There we go. Come on. There we go. So I'll hook this one back up. <clears throat> this bulb is very warm. See how much he is. watt and it's at about a little over half intensity and this that's interesting this 150 watt halogen is at full intensity but this 200 watt one is a little above half intensity well no I guess that makes sense and I can't film and run this thing at the same time um but yeah, I'm able to do that with the excess energy in the primary that comes from the collapsing field. It can run that. That's the raw RF. It should be going through a full bridge rectifier, which I don't have the right diodes for. They keep blowing up. When I add those diodes, there's more than 500 watt output here. And adding the diodes to this spot seems to manifest more power and blows the diodes and produce extreme heat. I'm not sure why that is. Um, yeah, we still have very impressive radiant energy effects. Can even touch this to 
anything grounded and it will light. How cool is that? And this is what the receiving light looks like. So, if anyone knows how to perfect this, I'd love you to get in contact with me. And notice how touch, touching this or grounding it better gets the lights brighter. Everything gets brighter. Um, yeah, it's about all I wanted to show. Um, it's just absolutely incredible technology. And that's very hot. And I just read some articles too where uh, these physicists were saying that they can get, they can extract electricity from the vacuum itself. I'll try and include that link somewhere in this video. They were saying they can extract endless amounts of electricity from the ambient environment or from the uh, zero point energy field. The dimension of counter space, to be precise. But yeah, anyway, we have power. It's real. It's usable. I'm no expert by any means. I have a pretty good idea of how to construct these devices and the principles of how they should work. I'm no expert or master by any means, but it seems the progress does seem to be slowly improving over time. And I'll be getting larger transistors. To run this it's at the point now where it can run a whole bedroom of a house so and I'm saying too much in these videos because I'm gonna be selling these different commercial models that will take the power charge a battery bank and it will run nearly forever or probably forever with just a ground connection And like I said, all the extra power comes from the way it's constructed, the frequency it's running at, and what your top load. You have to have the top load antenna, which is the ball. And I'm going to coat that in exotic materials that will even improve the power further. Similar to the Moray valve. So. That's what I wanted to say. This is a generator. And I believe the output power is f three to four times greater than the input at the moment. And the interesting thing is when you run stuff off of the raw RF like I'm doing, it's a little less efficient. It becomes more efficient when you have it connected to a full bridge rectifier. A lot more power manifests in the system somehow. I'm not sure why that occurs or why that happens, but let's just what happens. The only theory I have is keeping these leads as short as possible and connecting a full bridge rectifier directly to it. It prevents m detuning, I believe, and that's why there's more power in the system. But that's just my theory. So yeah, I figured I'd just show that. And it just keeps improving. I'm going to be getting 300 watt transistors or 500 watt transistors and when I get a few of those the output here when properly rectified should run a bedroom or be enough to run itself forever in a loop and maybe have a solar panel to uh, just keep the battery charged when it's not turned on and I didn't even coat that with exotic materials yet but anyway I've said all that and I'd like to say thank you to everyone who supports me. And the device just keeps improving. And it's basically an energy pump. And stay tuned. And wow, that is very hot.